Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got a Huawei P Smart 2019. Now the previous model, the 2018, was one of my favorite handsets of the previous year. So to be honest, the expectation is pretty high with this one. And we'll see if the phone delivers. Um, now do bear in mind this is a review unit so you do get the micro USB cable yes micro USB in 2019 that is a bit of a disappointment but they had to cut the cost somewhere and you do get the charger in the box as well now you do get the headphones in the box as well in a normal retail unit at least in UK but yeah that's that the good thing about the charger and the cable is that it takes around an hour and 45 minutes for a full charge and half an hour gives around 35 36 percent so that's not bad and to be honest i prefer huawei cutting costs in the charging cable port being micro usb rather than for example the camera quality or the display so this is the handset itself it does look like a glossy or metallic finish or anything like that it is plastic You've got a power button, volume up, volume down, two cameras, LED flash, and a fingerprint sensor on the back, a microphone, and a SIM tray on the top, and nothing on the side. And then we've got the bottom bit of the phone, which is a headphone jack, which is always a nice addition, a micro USB port, second microphone, and a speaker. So the phone out of the box does run on Android 9, which is amazing, especially considering the value of the phone, which is £199. I mean, I've noticed some of the phones uh, haven't been even updated to Oreo, and this being a 2019 model running on the latest Google software is a big kudos and a happy thing for Huawei. So as usual, we're going to go through the special features of the phone. So obviously you've got the fingerprint sensor. You even get the face recognition on the phone. You get the standard app lock and file lock, which allows you to lock the apps be behind the fingerprint sensor or a pin code, or you can lock specific. Um, so you can lock specific files and specific apps. The battery is now 34 milliampere hours, 3400 milliampere hours. It does actually last pretty decent. It lasts around two days on a heavy usage. That's obviously thanks to the Kirin 710 processor, but it is actually a very decent battery life. Now, smart resolution allows you to save some power if you'd like to, or if you need a bit more frames per second in games or better performance, you can always drop down the resolution of the screen itself, but you can leave it as a smart resolution so the phone will adjust it accordingly to the battery life. Now as it is with the Huawei's, you can do either a drawer type, which is like an iPhone style um, access to the apps, or you can do, sorry, the standard or the drawer, which actually has a button on the bottom, like a normal Android phone, which allows you to access your apps. 6.21 inch display obviously way bigger than the previous p smart uh, it's still an ips lcd but it's nice and oh that's actually a surprise wireless projection okay so you can wirelessly share what you're doing on your phone to a tally now considering it, again the price of the handset so you're paying 199 pounds you get 64 gigabytes of internal storage 64 i don't think there is anything else on the uk market that's officially available in stores that would give you 64 gigabytes of internal storage plus memory card um, for that price with that screen size and um, expandable memory. Now, in terms of the phone itself, you've got a built-in FM radio phone call, which allows you to transfer stuff from your previous phone and a party mode. So what a party mode does is very similar to the Honor handset. One person plays music on his handset on his uh, p smart and then everyone else connected to the same party mode can listen to the same tune so basically you can do like 10 speakers connected but only requires let's say one spotify account so that's pretty decent that's why it's called party mode in terms of the camera we do get the 13 megapixels but it's all about the ai with the new camera so basically it recognizes what you are taking the picture of so if you're taking a picture of a person it blurs the background for you you can obviously manually switch to let's say a portrait mode but the camera does recognize that it also recognizes for example if you point it towards a blue sky it will enhance the blue sky color if you point it towards food it will take a more saturated 
a picture, a picture with a more saturated colors. And then in terms of, let's say, pointing it uh, on, like, let's say, sticking with the food, let's say an apple, it will even tell you how many calories are in the apple. Then you've got the AR lens, which puts like an AR, let's say, a cut head or face on your subject, uh, which is a human subject. And it's very similar to the Apple emoji. Aperture and portrait. Aperture allows you to take a picture of a subject, where the portrait allows you to take a nice picture of a person with uh, where you blur the background. Obviously, as usual, I'll show you the results at the very end of the video. Now, it's pretty loud, the speaker itself, so have a listen to that. And like I said, with that screen size, screen quality, um, dual camera, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, it's going to be hard to find something better than that. So yeah, thanks for watching another episode of Quick Expert Reviews, and I'll speak to you soon, guys. Bye!